Good morning, and welcome to Christ Temple Cathedral St. Louis Virtual Worship Service. Our pastor is Bishop Lindsey Jones. Our mission is to be passionate about loving God, following Christ, and impacting the world. Our service will include one song selection, the preach word by Bishop Jones, and closing remarks with song. Thank you. Enjoy the service.
Well, good morning and to God bless you on this Lord's day. This day and every day is a day that the Lord has made and we are to rejoice and to be glad in it. We're continuing this morning in our series entitled When Love Reigns. And on last Sunday, we spoke to you from the subject living in the hope of Easter. But today we'd like to share with you from the word of God, from the subject, getting past your past, getting past your past. And I invite your attention to the New Testament book of Mark chapter 14. And I invite you to follow along with me as I begin reading selected verses from verses 29 through 72. Mark 14, beginning at verse 29, where the word of God says, Then Peter said to him, Even if all are made to stumble, yet I will not. Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you that today, even this night, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me, not once, not twice, but three times. But he spoke, referring to Peter, more vehemently, saying, If I have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said likewise. Verse 66 says, Now as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came. And when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, You also were with Jesus of Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are saying. And he went out on the porch and a rooster crowed. A second time in verse 72, the rooster crowed. And then Peter called to mind that word that Jesus had said to him, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he thought about it and wept. Pastor Brian Waite admits that he comes from a long line of losers. Uh, that is, people who have made all kinds of terrible choices and bad decisions in life. For instance, there's a statue in New Hampshire built to the memory of a general Waite from the Revolutionary War, no doubt one of his relatives, but it's not for admirable reasons. This general Waite abandoned his troops in the middle of a battle and ran away from the front lines. Then he got so lost in the dark night that both he and his horse froze to death. That statue is a warning against being a foolish coward. But then there's another man in Brian Waite's family background by the name of Pearl Waite, who also could be labeled a loser. Pearl Waite had a great idea and invented crystallized gelatin. His wife even named it Jello. Unfortunately, Pearl Waite sold the patent for his invention for just $25 maybe $450 at most. But the man who bought the patent for Jell-O turned it into a multi-million dollar product. And no doubt we've had our share of Jell-O. But Pearl Waite himself died broke. But the truth is we have all 
made our share of bad choices in life, even after coming to the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. And some of our choices and decisions have been a whole lot worse than others. Many of us can probably point to one or two or more of our decisions which we have made that we have trouble living down. Some decisions are just honest mistakes that do not have many consequences. While others of our choices and decisions in life have had devastating effects that have lasted for years. Sometimes we suffer the consequences and mistakes made by actually others in our lives, whether it's family members or close friends. For others, it is what we said or what we did in a heated or unguarded moment of anger or disappointment. Or possibly it's that unwise financial spending or investment decision. For others, it may be as outright and immoral as failure to control one's sexual passions or financial embezzlement and deception. And yet for others, it may simply be we've actually done what we or others thought was right, but in the end, we did what may be considered the right thing for the wrong reason and the wrong way, and any time we do even the right thing for the wrong reason and do it in the wrong way, it comes out the wrong thing. Well, if there is anyone in the Word of God who knows what it's like to make a series of bad choices during the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, and who, like a coward, turned his back on Christ, abandoned his team like General Waite and blew it big time. It was Peter. But also if there's anyone who knows what it's like and models to allow the love of Christ to reign in our lives and to get past our checkered past, it is also Peter. And when we allow the love of Christ to reign in our lives and help us get past our past, we accept that we can not change the past. And since we cannot change the past, one of the things we need to do is stop beating ourselves up about the past and let and stop letting others beat us up as well. For it says in verse 30, Jesus referring to Peter said, Assuredly, I say to you that today, even this night before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And between verse 30 and verse 72, we have one of the longest chapters in the entire New, Cha uh, New Testament. And though Mark is actually the shortest of the synoptic gospels, even Mark devotes 72 verses to that long night. For here we have the night before the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ. And not only was it a very long night, but it was a very, very bad night in the life of Peter. It was the darkest of hours of Peter's long life. And during that night is when Peter's 
great spiritual failure and collapse occurred. It was that night that Peter said things. It was that night that Peter did things. It was that night that Peter made decisions that he would be forever ashamed. And if there was ever a night in Peter's life that I believe he wished that he could wave a wand or pull out a magic eraser and somehow remove or blot out of his record his actions, it would be that night here in Mark 14. But when that rooster crowed in verse 72, it signaled a failure and a mistake that could not be undone. And when it comes to getting past our past, friends, we first have to simply accept that we can not change the past, no matter how much we'd love to. Uh, this week is the home opener of the St. Louis Cardinals, which uh, makes me uh, think about a famous uh, baseball player who was known for being a clutch hitter. That is, when the game is on the line, he was known for delivering the so-called walk-off hit. And sure enough, it was one of those moments. Uh, it was the bottom of the ninth, bases loaded, full count and two outs. There was the wind up in the pitch and certain in his mind it was ball four rather than swinging he took the pitch but to his shock and amazement the empire called strike three the crowd went crazy the winning team emptied the dugout and as the clutch hitter shamefully walked off the field he turned around to the umpire and he mumbled something which only the umpire could hear, but everyone could tell he was saying something. And so what they did, they went up to the umpire and said, uh, what did he say, up, uh, what did he say? And the umpire responded and said that the batter simply said, ump, I sure wish. I could have that pitch over again. Oh Lord have mercy. How many times if you or how many times have I struck out as they say, and we wish we could get a second shot at a pitch that came our way. No, it was not on the baseball diamond, but yet it was on the reality and in the midst of the realities of life. And what we do at times is we tend to beat ourselves up that is unduly by we keep rehearsing it over and over and wish we could do it over again, but we can't. We wish we could somehow turn back the hands of time and undo do the deed but the reality is we cannot and what we do some of us we make the mistake of forgiving and accepting everyone else's past mistakes but our own that is God has forgiven us but did you know that there are times that we have trouble forgiving ourselves well if God's forgiven you and you've done your best to make it right with parties you've wronged, you have to accept that you cannot change the past. And overall, I wanna to say to you, don't let the monkey of false guilt, and false guilt again is when uh, you've been forgiven by God, but don't let the monkey of false guilt play around with your hat. Uh, now I get that phrase, uh, uh, my dear friend Bishop Emery Lindsay and I, we were recently exchanging thoughts or emails on how much we miss our beloved deceased friend, Dr. Clarence McPherson. And certainly after the week of Easter, it's normally even when I would uh, take my spring or vacation, my spring break of vacation, and would usually 
make a trip out to Virginia to hang out with him for a few days. And usually during those uh, times, uh, we would, as they say, let our hair down, so to speak. But anytime he would notice in my conversation that it seems like I was wishing I could do and undo a decision of the past, what he would say to me, he would say, LJ, which is what he would often call me, he would say, LJ, stop letting that monkey turn your head around. And that was his way of saying, I could tell there's a monkey still on your back and you've allowed the monkey to go from your back up on your shoulders and now he's uh, bothering the cap you have on and turning it off the way around and it was just his way of saying uh, that, that it's important don't let decisions from the past that cannot be undone keep you from getting past the past not only do we need to Accept that we cannot change the past, but when love reigns and we get past our past, we also atone through confession and repentance. We atone through confession and repentance. And when it comes to atoning through confession and repentance, you need to remember Although we do have to realize we can't change the past, we do need to be sorrowful and contrite about the past. Uh, look at the uh, latter half of verse 72. It says, Then Peter called to mind the word that Jesus had said to him, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And when Peter thought about it, the Bible says he wept. And Matthew's account says he not only wept, but he wept bitterly. I declare the profuse bitter weeping of this strong-willed fisherman on the outside reflected there was true confession and not only true confession but true contrition or true uh, spirit of sorrow and repentance on the inside. See my friends True repentance has two elements or two components. The first component is confession. And the word confession, it actually comes from a legal or courtroom term, which means to simply agree with what the judge is saying. And when we confess to God and confess to others, we simply agree with God and we call it what God calls it, not what we may want to call it. But not only is there confession, but there is a component or element of remorse or contrition on the inside, which means we are truly sorry for the sin. We are not just sorry because we got caught. Because see, sometimes uh, uh, people are sorry just because they got, uh, got caught. We're not only just not sorry about the consequences, but we are simply sorry for the sinful action in the sight of God and the sight of man. And I want you to know today there is something, yes there is, about true repentance that ushers in the forgiveness and ushers in the cleansing and ushers, ushers in restoration from the Lord. 
And overall, there was something about when Peter realized what he had done, realized he had done the very thing that he said he'd never do. Uh, although Peter's grasp of Christ had slipped, Christ's grasp of Peter's heart had not. And I'm so glad today that we serve a God who forgives. It is the Apostle John, who was also a member of the inner circle in Jesus' life. And the Apostle John says, if, if we confess writing to believers our faults, he, Jesus, is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And so we need to accept that we cannot change the past. We need to atone through confession and repentance. But when the love of God reigns and we get past the past in our life, we also avoid tempting situations or behavior that will set us up for a repeat of the past in the present. And so we need to stop flirting with being what I want to call a repeat offender. Look at verse 66 and verse 67. The verses say, now as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came. And verse 67 says, and when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, you also were with Jesus of Nazareth. You see, before Peter experienced the great failure and blow out in his life, at the end of this chapter, Peter had set himself up, yes he did, for failure and sin by doing what we call being in the wrong place at the wrong time, enjoying the wrong thing before he did his most dastardly thing. You see, Peter knew, yes he knew, yes he did. He knew, or he should have known, he was predisposed to letting Jesus down by lying and denying and cursing because Jesus earlier had just said, Peter, though you are overconfident in yourself and rather arrogant in the presence of others, I want you to know before this night is over, you will deny me three times. And uh, maybe if uh, I believe, I declare that Peter maybe would not have acted outwardly on the inward predisposition that Jesus discerned had he not set himself up by being in the wrong position, being there warming himself in the fire uh, with the wrong group at the wrong time. And uh, it seemed like that given that Jesus said, Peter, you're going to fail me. He should have fallen down at the feet of Jesus and begin to beg for help. But rather than that, he became careless in his walk with God and began to 
take things for granted. And if you and I, if we're ever going to get past our past, we need to learn how to position ourselves to not commit the same mistakes in the future that we have done in the past. And, uh, if we don't do that, we will become what's called repeat offenders. Let me be more specific. For instance, if certain movies make you weak or tempt you and cause you to have certain desires that you can't always handle, you're setting yourself up for temptation by watching them. If you know that you are weakened, by certain relationships that are not good for you or with certain people, you need to avoid them. If you have a past problem with gambling, what in the world are you doing heading down to the casino? If you have a problem drinking, don't hang out near the bars or the nightclubs. If you're an impulse buyer, the last thing you need to do is to be going for exercise in the mall and paying attention to, to all of the sale signs. So often we set ourselves up by being in the wrong place, opening ourselves up to temptation that we can not handle. May I remind you of that man who was talking to a friend and he said to his friend, you know what? I ended up breaking my arm in two places. At which point his friend responded and said, well, if I was you, I would stay out of those kind of places. Uh, well, of course, uh, you know, they was, uh, he was being rather humorous or attempting to, but there are times we know that certain situations, certain temptations, certain circumstances set us up for failure. And when we know that that's the situation, we ought to stay out of those kinds of places that put us at temptation. And so when love reigns, we accept that we can not change the past. When love reigns, we atone by being genuinely contrite and repentant. When love reigns, we avoid tempting situations. But the good news also is that when love reigns, we anticipate, yes we do, we anticipate new opportunities in the future. So I want to tell you, you need to get ready for your new future. For whom that first Resurrection Sunday in Mark chapter 16, the Word of God says, the angel met those early arrivals at the tomb of Jesus. And the angels said to them, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus who was crucified. He's risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. And then verse seven, I love verse seven. This says, but go and tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee. There will you see him as he said to you. Oh, don't miss the significance of those two words from the angel when he told uh, those uh, ladies to go tell his disciples and Peter two words that ushered in and introduced hope into the life of an old fisherman 
who loved God but had let Jesus down. And Peter, two words that reminded this fallen disciples that where sin abound, grace does much more abound. And Peter, two words that reminded this follower that there is hope beyond failure. And friends, want Peter was restored after the resurrection from that day forward. Peter was a changed man. And when we confess our past in order to experience radical, powerful forgiveness in our life, when we confess, we acknowledge the old sinful ways as just that old and outdated. When we confess and ask God to forgive us, we agree with God to demolish uh, those sinful ways and replace them with godly ways that are new and better. We have a passion for the word. We have a passion for prayer. We have a passion for service. We, we confess and are truly repentant. We go from telling lies to speaking the truth. We go from being selfish to being selfless. When we truly are repentant, we go from spreading gossip to offering encouragement. When we confess and are truly repentant, we go from burning with anger to being filled with joy. But there's more good news today that not only when we have been fully restored, we are not only changed on the inside, but we also become a force to be reckoned with for God on the outside. For the good news today is that when we allow the risen Savior to enable us to get past our past, not only do we accept, we can't change the past. Not only do we allow atonement and restoration through repentance, not only do we avoid of making the same mistake, but the good news from the graveyard is that we can anticipate a change on the inside that will lead to a new future and destiny on the outside for the great news today, the most encouraging news today, is that not only will God forgive and cleanse and restore, watch this, did you know that God can use you and me more after failure? Then before, uh, that doesn't mean that we should intentionally fail and take lightly sin and failure because I've already said there are, we can't change the past. And so that ought to be a cautionary tale, a, uh, a, a cautionary message, a reminder to watch what we do because once we say what we say and do what we do, we cannot undo what's been done and take back what's been said. But the ultimate message is that God can use us more and often specializes in using us more after failure than before. And if you don't believe me, just look back at uh, chapter 16, verse 15, where the word of God says, referring to the angel, it says, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature and all oh, bless the name of God. Preach the gospel from that day forward, Peter did. For it was this same Peter who 
In Acts chapter 1, the Bible says on the day of Pentecost, he preached his first sermon. And do you know 3,000 people came to the Lord Jesus Christ and received him as Savior? How is that for your first sermon? It was this same Peter who, who in Acts chapter 3 said to the lame man, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto thee, and in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. It was this same Peter who wrote the book of First Peter. It is the same Peter who wrote the New Testament epistle of Second Peter. It is the same Peter who became the uh, so-called first bishop of Rome. It is the same Peter whom Jesus said before his failure that upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. My brother, my sister, God specializes in giving us a great future after failure. I am convinced that Peter had no idea how greatly God would use him thousands of years later when we read the word of God from the apostle Peter, when we see the impact upon the church, God can give us a great destiny. Oh, when we decide that we will not allow the past to keep us from moving forward to a promising future. As his parents watched from the patio, there was a little boy who played baseball by himself in the backyard. Of course, this amounted to the usual tossing a ball up into the air and attempting to hit it with his bat. And as he did so, no one in particular would be paying attention. But he says, I'm the greatest hitter in the world. Well, unfortunately, he missed. And uh, so he tried again and threw the ball up in the air, swung, and he missed again. After saying, again, I'm the greatest baseball hitter. Well, with strike two on him, the boy paused a moment, examined the bat as if something was wrong with the bat, and then examined the ball, and then he tossed it up a third time and threw the ball in the air. And while it was in the air, he said, I'm the greatest batter in history. He swung for all he was worth. But just like the other two attempts, he missed and mumbled strike three. Then the boy sat down and considered the situation for a moment. And after a minute, he turned to his parents and much to their surprise, he said, wow, I just struck out the greatest hitter in the world. I must be the greatest pitcher of all time. <laughs> You see, even though he had struck out as a hitter, he realized that he could be the greatest pitcher. And just like Peter struck out three times, oh, God made him the greatest preacher of all time, possibly second only to the Apostle Paul. And I want you to know that no matter how many times you may have struck out, Oh, you can get past your past if you accept. You cannot change the past if you will atone contritely in the sight of God. If you will avoid making the same mistakes. And most of all, the word today is that will you anticipate, yes, anticipate being used by God in the future. This is Deacon Alonzo Richardson. And we would like to say thank you for joining 
our virtual worship service. Please visit us at www.ctcstlouis.org for the latest information. If you have prayer requests, if you would like to give your life to the Lord, or even join our ministries, please email us at ChristTempleSTL at gmail.com. Please also follow our social media pages and also subscribe to this YouTube page and click the notification bell to the right and click all so you will be notified when the latest video comes out. We will also like to provide different ways to give your offering through electronic giving. If you'd like to send your offering, please send it to Christ Temple Cathedral, 4301 Page Boulevard, St. Louis, Missouri, 63113. Once again, we say thank you for joining us and we pray God's blessing on your life. Thank you. Have a great one.